First of all, I would like to say thank you to Dr. Rahul Dada who has played a massive role in organizing this online class. I also welcomed all the faculty members and students who joined us in this lecture on the title Soil Health, Nutrients Role and Management in Soil. In this class, we will discuss applied knowledge that can be used in the identification of poor soil fertility, impacts on plants and strategies which can be used for the improvement of soil fertility. Before starting today lecturer, I would request all the students and faculty members to kindly note down all the critical questions. All those questions will be addressed at the end of this class in the discussion session. In a case, if any of the participants missed some point, he or she can write it. I will also discuss that point in detail in the discussion session. Let us start with our first slide having contents regarding today's lecture. In this class, I will discuss in detail soil health in terms of soil fertility. Our core aim will be to identify and discuss the most important indicators which can be used for the assessment of soil health. We will also discuss soil fertility especially essential nutrients that are involved in the development of soil fertility. Criteria of essentiality of nutrients will also be discussed which will be quite helpful in making decisions for the selection of essential nutrients for plants. In these essential nutrients, two major categories will also be discussed in detail including macro and micronutrients. After that forms of macro and micronutrients will also be discussed which are readily available for uptake of plants. From the practical point of view deficiency, symptoms and the role of each macro and micronutrient in plants will be discussed. In the end, critical points regarding the management of soil fertility and nutrients management will be elaborated in detail with a slide of a conclusive conclusion. Soil Health we can define soil health as capacity of a soil to function within ecosystem boundaries to sustain biological productivity, maintain environmental quality and promote plant and animal health. In particular, it deals with the ability of soils to provide nutrients to plants for their growth and reproduction. All plant nutrients which are minerals in nature are provided from the soil. The presence of high concentration does not refer to soil fertility, because an element present in higher concentration in soil may not be available to plants due to their forms, bindings to soil particles or other chemical compounds and other physicochemical properties of soil. The concentrations of plant available essential elements refer to soil fertility. Soil fertility is a dynamic domain of soils because it can be changed, managed, due to the influence of farming practices, climatic conditions and application of manures, green manures, fertilizers and biofertilizers. Other important factors which can influence soil fertility include soil texture, soil structure, soil pH, soil organic matter, soil moisture and soil organisms. In the context of agriculture, it may refer to its ability to sustain productivity. Furthermore, a healthy soil would ensure proper retention and release of water and nutrients, promote and sustain root growth, and maintain soil biotic habitat. Soil Health Indicators Soil health is the capacity of soil to function as a vital living system to sustain biological productivity, maintain environmental quality, and promote plant, animal, and human health. This is a concept that characterizes the ability of a living soil system to perform functions such as supporting plant health. The idea of healthy soil must be conveyed through useful measurements known as soil health indicators that are sensitive to changes in soil processes and represent connections between soil biological, chemical, and physical properties. Attributes with a rapid response to natural or anthropogenic actions are considered good indicators of soil health. Among the physical indicators, soil texture, aggregation, moisture, porosity, and bulk density have been used, while among chemical indicators total C and N, mineral nutrients, organic matter, cation exchange capacity, among others are well established. However, most of them generally have a slow response, 
when compared to the biological ones, such as microbial biomass C and N, biodiversity, soil enzymes, soil respiration, etc., in addition to macro and mesofauna. Thus, a systemic approach based on different kinds of indicators, physical, chemical and biological, in assessing soil health would be safer than using only one kind of attribute. Many human activities have caused desertification, loss of biodiversity, disruption of aggregates, loss of organic matter and nutrients, among others. Today, it is imperious to maintain soil health and productivity with increasing emphasis on reforestation and recuperation of degraded areas through the use of organic amendments, reintroduction of plants, soil fauna and microorganisms. Majorly there are three types of soil health indicators, physical indicators, chemical indicators, and biological indicators. Physical indicators. Aggregate stability. Soil aggregates are held together tightly via root exudates, soil fungi, and inherent soil properties. They can be improved upon by creating environments for biological glues to be produced by plants and microbes by reducing tillage that physically breaks soil aggregates. Available water capacity Much of this depends on innate soil texture but can be impacted by the amount of soil organic matter and soil aggregation both of which can increase water holding capacity. Soil compaction, high amounts of soil compaction mean less room for air or water in the soil, impacting water infiltration and drainage, plant root growth, as well as soil microbial communities. Being timely when driving large equipment on soils, as well as implementing deep rooting plants on the soil, can help alleviate this. Chemical indicators. pH pH is an important indicator of soil health because if there's inadequate soil pH, crop growth can be impacted and key nutrients may become less available. Additionally, soil pH can vary soil microbial communities. Macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur are all macronutrients that are vital to plant growth. If these nutrients are not available in plant usable quantities, crop growth will likely suffer. Micronutrients, although necessary in smaller quantities than macronutrients, micronutrients are just as critical to plant growth. Typically, soils provide plants with enough necessary micronutrients. Biological indicators Soil microbial protein measures nitrogen from proteins being broken down in the soil which would then be available for plant uptake. Active carbon, measures the carbon containing compounds which are readily broken down by microbes as food. Active carbon is essentially a measure of the food stock available for microbes, which promotes nutrient availability in cycling. OM, organic matter influences water holding capacity contains nutrients that can be broken down and made available, and provides food for microbes. Improving organic matter in the soil can be challenging but made easier by introducing conservation tactics like reducing tillage, adding other crops to a rotation, and using cover crops. Respiration, measures the amount of carbon dioxide produced by microbes which can help indicate soil microbial activity. Soil fertility. Soil fertility is a complex process that involves the constant cycling of nutrients between organic and inorganic forms. The organisms which can grow, reproduce, have their own metabolism and take energy are considered living organisms. All living organisms need nutrients to perform these functions. However, different living organisms take up nutrients in different forms and may also have different nutrient requirements. In general, animals fulfill their energy requirements by taking carbohydrates, fats, proteins, etc., whereas plants obtain energy from light by using inorganic elements. Plants can take up a large number of chemical elements, however, only 17 elements are considered essential for plants and these are called plant nutrients. In some textbooks, 
The term essential plant nutrients is also used, which is technically not appropriate because an element is termed as a plant nutrient only when it is essential for normal plant growth and reproduction and functions of this essential element cannot be performed by any other chemical element. In case of an adequate supply of any one of 17 plant nutrients plants cannot perform normally, however, plant requirements of these essential elements are quite diverse. Some nutrients are required in greater amounts and others are required in minor amounts. Even excessive availability of a plant nutrient may be harmful to plant growth and yield. At a certain concentration range of each nutrient in plant tissue, plant growth and yield are maximum. This range is called critical range. Soil fertility is the branch of soil science that deals with the supply of essential elements, plant nutrients to plants. In particular, it deals with the ability of soils to provide nutrients to plants for their growth and reproduction. All plant nutrients which are minerals in nature are provided from the soil. The presence of high concentration does not refer to soil fertility, because an element present in higher concentration in soil may not be available to plants due to their forms bindings to soil particles or other chemical compounds and other physicochemical properties of soil. The concentrations of plant available essential elements refer to soil fertility. Soil fertility is a dynamic domain of soils because it can be changed, managed, due to the influence of farming practices, climatic conditions and application of manures, green manures, fertilizers and biofertilizers. Other important factors which can influence soil fertility include soil texture, soil structure, soil pH, soil organic matter, soil moisture and soil organisms. Soil is a medium of growth for higher plants that provides essential nutrients, water, and anchorage to plants. The capacity of soil to provide essential elements to plants are termed soil fertility. The high amount of a total nutrient concentration in a soil does not always mean that that particulate soil is productive, or even fertile in that nutrient, as a number of other growth factors significantly influence nutrient availability within the soil and the plant's capacity for nutrient uptake. Continuous availability of essential nutrients throughout the plant growth period is necessary for normal growth and yield. Hence soil fertility is one of the most important factors determining productivity. Fortunately, farmers can control fertility by managing the fertilizer application. However, site-specific estimates of the nutrient fertility status of the soils are very important to rationalize the fertilizer use for economic agriculture. 1. And the most important aspect of fertilizer management is the evaluation of soil. Fertility as both low and overdose of fertilizer application may cause serious problems for crop production and the environment, respectively. Reliable information can only be accomplished through a well-defined and managed program of a soil fertility evaluation. Soil fertility evaluation is the process of estimating the amount of native and residual nutrient elements which could be available for use by growing crops in a particular soil and the amount and type of fertilizers to be supplemented and the appropriate application method for profitable crop production. The most common nutrient deficiencies in our soils are Nitrogen, Phosphorus, Potassium, Zinc, Boron, and Iron. However, Deficiencies of other nutrients may occur because of specific soil and environmental conditions. Criteria of Essentiality Plants need food for their growth and development like other living things. Humans and animals depend on plants for their food but plants can produce their food from natural raw materials. Sixteen elements have been found to be indispensable for plant growth, development and reproduction. These essential elements are referred to as essential nutrients. An element should meet the following three criteria to be termed as an essential nutrient. 1. Plant is unable to complete vegetative or reproductive stage of its life without that element. 2. 
the need for such a nutrient is specific and its deficiency symptoms can be corrected by supplying only the same nutrient. 3. The nutrient plays a direct role in the plant's active, metabolic, processes and meets its nutritional needs. Essential nutrients can be distinguished into macro and micronutrients depending upon their requirements. Macronutrients Macronutrients are required in relatively larger quantities by plants. Their concentration in plants is usually more than 500 mg per kilogram. That is, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur. Macronutrients are further categorized into primary and secondary nutrients. From a management perspective, the primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, because they are most often limiting from a crop production standpoint. All of the other essential macronutrient elements, calcium, magnesium and sulfur, are secondary nutrients because they are rarely limiting and seldom added to soils as fertilizers. Micronutrients Micronutrients are required in relatively smaller quantities by plants. Their concentration in plants is usually less than milligram per kilogram. That is, zinc, copper, boron, iron, manganese, chloride, molybdenum. Sources and available forms of nutrients. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, are available to plants naturally from air and water. For other nutrients, many sources can be used but commonly used sources for Nitrogen is urea, ammonium sulfate, calcium ammonium nitrate, the ammonium phosphate and nitrophos. These sources provide ammonical and nitrate forms of nitrogen to the plants which are readily available for plants uptake. In the case of phosphorus, single superphosphate, triple superphosphate, the ammonium phosphate, monoammonium phosphate and nitrophos provides primary and secondary orthophosphate. Sulfate of potash and merit of potash are major sources of potassium ions. Calcium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, zinc sulfate, copper sulfate, iron sulfate and manganese sulfate provide calcium, magnesium, zinc, copper, iron, manganese and sulfate ions. Sodium and potassium chlorides are important sources of chlorides. However, ammonium molybdate and boric acid provide molybdate and borate respectively. In addition to these mineral fertilizers, some organic sources and biofertilizers are also used to supply these nutrients. Plants available essential nutrients and forms are highlighted in the provided table. Nitrogen is very important and needed for plant growth. It is found in healthy soils, and give plants the energy to grow, and produce fruit or vegetables. Nitrogen is actually considered the most important component for supporting plant growth. It is part of the chlorophyll molecule, which gives plants their green color and is involved in creating food for the plant through photosynthesis. Lack of nitrogen shows up as general yellowing, chlorosis, of the plant. Because nitrogen can move around in the plant, older growth often yellows more than new growth. Nitrogen is also the primary building block for plant protoplasm. Protoplasm is the translucent substance that is the living matter in cells. It is needed for flower differentiation, speedy shoot growth, the health of flower buds and increases the quality of fruit set. It also acts as a catalyst for the other minerals. In a process called photosynthesis, plants use energy from the sun to change carbon dioxide and water into starches and sugars. These starches and sugars are the plant's food. Photosynthesis means making things with light. Soil nitrogen exists in three general forms, organic nitrogen compounds, ammonium ions and nitrate ions. At any given time. 95 to 99 percent of the potentially available nitrogen in the soil is in organic forms, either in plant and animal residues, in the relatively stable soil organic matter, or in living soil organisms, mainly microbes such as bacteria. 
This nitrogen is not directly available to plants, but some can be converted to available forms by microorganisms. A very small amount of organic nitrogen may exist in soluble organic compounds, such as urea, that may be slightly available to plants. The majority of plant available nitrogen is in the inorganic forms ammonium ions and nitrate ions sometimes called mineral nitrogen. Ammonium ions bind to the soil's negatively charged cation exchange complex and behave much like other cations in the soil. Nitrate ions do not bind to the soil solids because they carry negative charges, but exist dissolved in the soil water, or precipitated as soluble salts under dry conditions. The nitrogen in the soil that might eventually be used by plants has two sources, nitrogen containing minerals and the vast storehouse of nitrogen in the atmosphere. The nitrogen in soil minerals is released as the mineral decomposes. This process is generally quite slow and contributes only slightly to nitrogen nutrition on most soils. Bacteria such as rhizobia that infect, nodulate, the roots of, and receive much food energy from, legume plants can fix much more nitrogen per year when the quantity of nitrogen fixed by rhizobi exceeds that needed by the microbes themselves, it is released for use by the host legume plant. This is why well nodulated legumes do not often respond to additions of nitrogen fertilizer. They are already receiving enough from the bacteria. Phosphorus exists in different forms in soil, these forms can be grouped into four types. These include plant available and organic phosphorus and three forms that do not plant available, viz. Organic phosphorus adsorbed phosphorus and primary mineral phosphorus. The processes that bring about phosphorus transformations are weathering and precipitation, mineralization and immobilization, and adsorption and desorption. Plant available phosphorus is increased by weathering, desorption and mineralization, while immobilization, precipitation and adsorption decrease plant available phosphorus. Immobilization occurs when plant available phosphorus forms are taken up by microbes, turning inorganic phosphorus into organic phosphorus forms, which is not available to plants. However, over time, the microbial phosphorus may become available to plants when microbes die. An important strategy for improving phosphorus fertility in soils is to maintain an adequate level of organic matter in the soil. Mineralization is opposite to immobilization and results in the slow release of phosphorus in the soil solution during the crop growing season, making phosphorus available for plant uptake and thus reducing the need for pea fertilizer applications. Phosphorus mineralization is favored by a soil temperature range of 65 to 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Adsorption is the chemical binding of plant available pea to soil particles which makes it unavailable to plants. The release of adsorbed pea from the bound state into the soil solution is termed desorption. Adsorption is a quick process while desorption usually occurs slowly. Adsorption is different from precipitation. Adsorption is a reversible process involving the chemical binding of phosphorus to soil particles whereas precipitation involves a permanent change in the chemical properties of phosphorus as it is removed from the soil solution. Availability of soil P to plants is maximum in between pH 6 and 7. At higher pH in alkaline and calcareous soils, phosphorus can precipitate with Ca making it less available for plant uptake. At lower pH, in acid soils, phosphorus tends to get fixed by iron and aluminium oxides, that is, sesquioxides. In soils, phosphorus is generally present in the following three forms, solution phosphorus, label phosphorus and fixed phosphorus. Usually, solution phosphorus comprises only a fraction of the total soil phosphorus. Most of the solution phosphorus prevails in orthophosphate form, but small amounts of organic phosphorus may exist as well. The solution phosphorus fraction is of great significance for crop growth as it is the phosphorus pool that is immediately available for plant uptake. Label phosphorus is the solid phase phosphorus, which, 
on depletion of soil solution phosphorus, is readily released into the soil solution. The concentration of phosphate in soil solution decreases because of phosphorus uptake by plants. This lowers the level of phosphorus in soil solution, consequently, some of the label pool phosphorus becomes soluble and replenishes soil solution phosphorus. Fixed soil phosphorus comprises highly insoluble inorganic phosphate and organic compounds which are resistant to mineralization by microorganisms. Phosphate in this pool may remain unavailable form to plants for years and, hence, is insignificant regarding soil fertility and plant growth.